I'm singing, I'm in a store and I'm singing, I'm in a store and I'm singing. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is to sing loud for all to hear. As we know, there are four elf food groups. Candy, candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. Uh, so anything we do from the film Elf is going to have to adhere to these four food groups. Although it doesn't necessarily have to represent all of them. It doesn't stay in that, in that space. Buddy the Elf is a adopted elf at the North Pole who actually comes from New York. Uh, he's the son of James Caan. Uh, he comes back to New York. I think if I'm not mistaken, he gets there by uh, walking past the swirly twirly gumdrop lake and over many mountains. And then I walked through the Lincoln Tunnel. So while watching this movie, there's a few scenes that jumped out at me looking for a drink. You know, he gets perfume in the mouth. There's the world's best cup of coffee. Congratulations! Chugging a two liter bottle of soda in like under a minute. And the world's best cup of coffee though, that's interesting. Cause he, that happens, he goes to the world's best cup of coffee place and then he has coffee in his dad's office and he does not like coffee, it turns out. Uh, and then while working in the mail room, he notices that uh, his work buddy, who's there from on work release, is adding some syrup to his coffee. Buddy seems to think that, oh, syrup in coffee, that's a, that's a smart idea. Maybe I would like coffee with some syrup in it. I guess, I love syrup. Oh, I love it. Buddy likes that a lot, actually. The tickle fight! Tickle fight! Tickle fight! Uh, a lot, a lot. Uh, he seems to immediately take to that kind of syrup in his coffee. I feel like that kind of syrup might be some old granddad, is uh, what it looks like to me. So I think we're gonna go with that. I think that uh, we can make elfish coffee, like a variation on Irish coffee here. So let's make elfish coffee from Buddy the Elf. We're gonna make some coffee. Uh, I'm gonna do a pour over real quick because I thought about making this drink. Should it be iced coffee? Should we do it from a cold brew? But I really think it should be a hot coffee. Maybe we should do a hot coffee drink. And that's something I have to always watch too is that I don't say coffee. Uh, throw a filter in my Chemex coffee maker. For those of you with eagle eyes, yes, this was purchased at Zeba's back when I lived on the Upper West Side. Do a filter rinse real quick. Just rinsing off the filter and then we'll pour that off. I'll add my coffee to my filter now. I'm eyeballing this. I've made a lot of coffee in this. I kind of know where I want to go to with it. My water is actually exactly where I want it to be for temperature, so uh, I want it to be about 94 degrees Celsius. And you can actually see the grind swelling right now as some oils are releasing. I think that's what's going on there. I don't know enough about coffee. I just know that's a desirable thing. Foaming, swelling grinds. It'd be great to do this on a jib, huh? Because we've done this before and it sucked. Now we've got a jib. Great. I come right over it. So while this is brewing, I should mention that my barware is provided by Barfly Mixology here. If you like the tools I'm using, you can pick them up in the link and in the pinned comment below. I should also mention that all the watches I'm wearing on the show are provided by Crown and Caliber. If you're interested in watches, why don't you check them out? There's a link down there in the pinned comment. All right, so this coffee is done brewing. I'm gonna ditch my grinds now. Uh, nice hot coffee. So I've got my coffee cup here that I will be putting my coffee into. Uh, I think we're going to stage this with everything but the coffee. Then we'll mix our topper and then we'll add the coffee and the topper so that they both go in fresh. So the coffee stays, this coffee will hold its heat better together, you know, as one big heat sink. Uh, we start parting it out, it's gonna lose its heat very quickly. Three quarters of an ounce maple syrup. Uh, and an ounce and a half of old granddad bottled and bound whiskey. Kentucky straight bourbon. Old Granddad's a great whiskey, actually. Much, much respect to a lot of people, a lot of fans. And so those we're gonna let sit right there. The next thing I wanna do is I'm going to uh, prepare some, some maple whipped cream to top this drink with. 
Now I know in a traditional Irish coffee, the cream should be done fresh and shaken and just poured across the top. And that's actually something I got wrong uh, by a long shot when I did my previous Irish coffee episode. So maybe that's something we'll have to revisit. Uh, if you wanna see me do the Irish coffee wrong, there's a link in the pinned comment below and also up there in the cards. And so I thought for a minute that maybe this was an opportunity to correct the record and do the shaken cream. But in playing around with this drink, I gotta say, it's elvish and I really want it to be topped with full-on whipped cream. But we are gonna make our own with this handy dandy icy whipper. Now you can buy whipped cream. You can have an icy whipper like this for making whipped cream or uh, an alternative brand. Or you could whip it with a whisk. Uh, if you whip it with a whisk, you're gonna need like a piping bag or something to dispense it unless you just dollop it out with spoons and that's not very pretty. And if you happen to be making a YouTube show, very pretty is super important, which is why you know, I'm the only person allowed in front of the camera. But that joke didn't work. So we're going to add uh, a healthy amount of our whipped, uh, of heavy cream to this. Um, about a cup to a cup and a half. And more maple syrup. Um, I think that an ounce, to the ratio here for cup and a half of heavy cream should be about an ounce of maple syrup. Uh, that's gonna make a very sweet whipped cream. It, you'd be surprised how little sugar you need to make a very sweet whipped cream. And I've got my charging cartridges here. Only need one for this purpose. Okay, whipped cream is ready. We're going to add four ounces of coffee here. You could eyeball this. Um, I know that it's gonna to come to right about here on this cup, but uh, for science, we'll measure it. Four ounces of hot coffee go into our drink. We're gonna to top that with our maple whipped cream. And a crumble, uh, some candy cane that I've crushed up in a mortar and pestle. And that is elvish. Coffee. Let's uh, see how we did. That is delicious. <laughs> that is delicious and unique. The combination of maple syrup and coffee uh, go together way better than your initial expectations might lend you to believe. But I'll bet you're already combining a lot of maple syrup and coffee anyway if you're having pancakes with your coffee. So if you think about it, those flavors actually play very nicely together. They, they are kind of warm and woodsy combinations. Coffee, when you get down to it, is actually, um, it's bitter, but it's also very nutty. And if you temper that bitterness with the cream or the sugar, uh, you really bring out the nuttiness of it. And maple syrup, well, it tastes like maple syrup. Uh, you should have some idea of what that flavor is. You can imagine it goes very good with a nutty, warm kind of flavor. Our whipped cream on top, the maple whipped cream, is definitely a component of that. And as you're sipping through it, it kind of is mixing the drink into sort of a latte in your mouth. But what's interesting is our candy cane crumble uh, adds a kind of peppermint, menthol aspect to this drink that is really unexpected. And it kind of activates all of your taste buds and your sinuses and just opens you up really intensely to the experience of this delicious hot coffee, uh, hot bourbon-y coffee. Very unusual evolution because that maple syrup and candy cane flavor are really quickly kind of changing places in your mouth, I find, and, and kind of fighting for dominance. And they're kind of fighting for dominance back and forth. It's like rapid cycling for me between maple, candy cane, maple, candy cane, maple, candy cane. I don't know that we're tasting a ton of the bourbon in here, to be honest, but it's also certainly not in the way. Uh, I think that using uh, the wrong spirit here could become a problem if it, if it was dominant, uh, if it was taking over. Um, and then 
I like the way the old granddad is going in this drink very much. I, I have to agree with Buddy the Elf. I, I like syrup in my coffee. I know there's no candy corn in this dish, but not every meal uh, has to hit all four food groups. So we'll save the candy corn for another day, I think. I, I, I think candy corn would be weird to put in here. Elf was originally supposed to have Jim Carrey in the titular role of Buddy. I think that would have been a very different movie. Apparently it took so long to get made that they had to recast. Uh, Jim had moved on and Colin, uh, Colin Farrell, <laughs> Will Farrell was the guy who got the part. Uh, Zoe Deschanel was a blonde back then. She then uh, became a new girl and dyed her hair brunette. So apparently in real life, and I find this to be so... This is what I've read. That in real life, Will Farrell actually had a gig as a mall Santa before he became Will Farrell. And that at that time, his, his elf was Chris Kattan. That is so tidy. I don't know if I'd buy that one, but that's what it says on the internet. Uh, I hope that's true. I mean, those kids were in for a real treat. No more. There's a couple of scenes I, I think. First off, it's not even that long ago, but there's a couple of scenes in that movie. I just at first I look at them and I'm like, I cannot believe this is how this went. One, when he's in the the meeting, and he refers to Peter Dinklage as an elf repeatedly. Like the first time, I think the first time you call the little person an elf. Uh, you would be asked to leave, even if you're the owner's son. He's like, get, get out. You're, you're hilarious, my friend. He doesn't uh, get out of the room. But they let him stay in there and, and berate him unintentionally until there was a fistfight. I don't think that, that for me, strains verisimilitude. It kind of takes me out of the moment. I don't know if I buy that entirely. And then when he just like accidentally wanders into the employee's locker room, where Zoe is taking a shower and singing to herself. One, I don't think a ton of people sexy sing to themselves when they're alone in the shower, but sure, fine. Not sing to them, no, I got a dirty look. Yes, lots of people sing to themselves in the shower. I don't think a lot of people sexy sing to themselves. Well, maybe just a half a drink more. And then he goes in there, and he starts singing in a duet, and she freaks out because this is the ladies' locker room. And so I think that movie ends with him in prison, or at the very least being escorted out never to return, like with a restraining order. That does seem more likely than how that movie ends. But you know, it's Hollywood, so it's gotta have the Hollywood ending, I guess. You know. If you liked this episode, you should check out the one where I made Irish coffee kind of the wrong way. Uh, and you can give me hell about it in the comments if you like. I think if Buddy the, I think Buddy the Elf is, belongs in prison. Send him to jail. Send Buddy the Elf to jail. Merry Christmas.